All right, so here's the, here's the challenge that I have. So there, there, there are two groups of people walking the earth. All right, you got, you got one group right now. Now, both groups have these dreams and these goals. Both groups from the time that they were young saw things on television, read things in books. They physically saw people doing things. They was like, yo, I want to do that. Like, I want that. I, I remember being a kid, you know, and I used to watch the Brady Bunch. And I used to be like, yo, I want a family like that. I, re I, re I remember watching it. See, my mom had me. She got pregnant at 17 with me. I didn't really start talking to my biological father, like literally having a conversation with my biological father until I was 30. So as a child, because I didn't have that, you know, traditional home, I remember looking at the Brady Bunch going, I, I want, I, I remember, oh, leave it to Beaver. <laughs> leave it to Beaver. Like, I just was like, the, you know, as, a, as the Cleavers, like, they just had it going on. You know what I'm saying? They never, like, really argued. You know what I'm saying? Like, they worked everything out. Everybody like had roles and respond. It was just, they were great. Right? And so I, I remember growing up, like, yo, one day, like this is my this is my reality. But one day, one day I'm gonna have a family just like Leave it to Beaver. Like I remember saying it to myself. And I, I remember friends, like they want to drive these kind of cars and leave in these type of neighborhoods. I wasn't really thinking about that kind of stuff. I was just like, you know what? Like one day I just want to have a happy family. Like, I want to come home, and I want my kids to, like, run up to me, Dad. When they get older, I want them to be proud of me. Right? I just had these dreams. I'm going to put my kids through college. They're not going to have to pay th for college. I'm going to put them through college. Like, they're going to go to, you know, these big colleges and whatever. I just had, I had dreams. Right? I had dreams. And so what I want you to do for me is I want you to, and I know a lot of you are adults, and you, you got, you do, you're adulting. And, and sometimes you don't have time for dreams and goals and stuff, right? But I want you to do me a favor. Like, don't let life do you like that. Like, don't let life put you in a circumstance or a situation where you stop dreaming. Like, don't let life put you in a situation where you are helping somebody else make their dreams become a reality that you forgot you have your, your own. Like, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't get so caught up giving some job 30, 40, 50, 60 hours of your day that you don't have any time left for yourself. And so what we're going to do right now, we're going to get back to the basics, right? We're going to get back to, and, you know, I wake up every day and people say, yo, E, what's the, like, what's the thing? I know you say execution, but like, what's that thing? And it's like to be fruitful, to multiply, to have dominion. Yes. <laughs> Like, no, 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 when I wake up every day, like, I claim that, that, that the first commandment, not the one later down in Exodus, like the first one in Genesis, was I was commissioned to be fruitful, to multiply, and to have dominion. <laughs> like, that's what I was commissioned to do. Like, that was, that's the command. And so, I want you to write down those dreams and goals that you still have that you have not accomplished. I want you to write them down. Now do me a favor. Don't, don't, don't adult me. Don't life me. I'm not interested right now in reality. I don't want to talk about reality right now. I remember CJ, he's the president of my organization and CJ and I used to talk and I was like, CJ, that's not real. And he said, E, don't let the truth mess up a good story. Don't do that. We're not doing that right now. And so do me a favor. I don't, I don't want reality right now. I'm not interested in how much your student loans are. I'm not interested. Because your student loans are sucking your dream. I'm not interested right now. And I got a divorce and right now I just can't. I'm not, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Eric, I lost a child and you don't know what it's like to. I'm not, I'm not interested in your reality right now. I, I, I want you to get back to your dreams. I want you to get back to your goals because no matter what has happened in life, you've got another 30 years, another 40 years, another 50 years. Like you can't get stuck on, 
Like you can't let that thing that devastated you in 1989, the thing that devastated you in uh, 1996, 2001, like you can't wake up every day to 2001. 2001 was a tragedy. Yes, it was, but you can't stay there. You can't keep waking up to that. I got, you got to wake up to your dreams and go, look, I always tell people, we all go through pain, get a reward for yours. You know, we all go through pain. We all go through pain. We all go through something. We all go through our go through. I wouldn't have time to tell you about all the trauma that I went through in my life. But I just figured since I went through so much trauma, I might as well use the trauma to make all my dreams become a reality. All right. So you wrote it down. You wrote it down. Two types of people. So you got my homie that called me the other day. Like we had, a, I'm like, I'm, this is blowing my mind. I'm like, God, I'm the number one motivational speaker in the world. Like, I don't know why you calling me and you're not getting personal development from me. <laughs> no, listen to what I just said. This is my best friend in the whole wide world. Listen to me very close. Like this is the dude I trust with my wife and my kid. Like this is the person that my dreams, like he helped me with my dream. I said, why are we on the phone talking about deficits right now? Why are you doing that? Do you know, do you know people who don't know me and I'm not their best friend in the whole wide world have gone through one of my programs and now they killing the game and you know me and you're not killing the game. Like, why are we on the phone talking about, okay, so we're going to write down, you wrote down your goals and your dreams. I want you to write down on the other side what's keeping you from those and just be real. Because I want to talk about the conversation he and I had. Because what's keeping you from that, we, we got, we're going to have to talk about that and we're going to have to deal with that today. And we're going to have to finish that for the rest of our lives. So two types of people, right? So we're on the phone. I'm like, yo, God, do me a favor. Like, can we stop talking about your reality? I'm not interested. I'm like right now in marital bliss and you trying to bring me back to divorce. Are you talking about your marriage and where it ain't? I don't want to talk about that right now. I'm in bliss. So don't, don't bring me there. You, I'm, I'm, I'm a multimillionaire. You talking about you ain't making no, you're not making enough money to take care of you. I don't want to talk about that talk. Can we talk about your dreams and goals and get to them? So we're having a conversation, right? And so I said, look, stop, just stop, right? Just tell me, what are your dreams and goals? You're like, you know, to be a multimillionaire, to do this with my wife, take care of my kid. I said, okay, let's talk for a minute. Let's talk. Do you know what it takes to be a multimillionaire? He's like, absolutely. And I'm in the industry, as a matter of fact, where in another three months, if I do what I'm supposed to do, I can actually make. I said, what? You're in the industry that you can do what? He was like, I'm in the industry where I can make a million dollars between now, October, November, December. I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, what industry are you in? He said, the solar industry. I said, you're absolutely right. I said, do you know how many clients you'd have to get to make a million? He was like, absolutely. I was like, bet. We getting somewhere now. Look, look, I want you to look at your goals. And I want you to ask yourself this question. Do you know what it takes to make that happen? Like, do you, like, like, literally, like, because this is all it's going to take. Three things. This is all it's going to take. Do you know what it takes? And you guys have an advantage because you've been at this conference, I think, three days. you got a whole bunch of information. Look, the only thing it takes to go from where I went to, a homeless, high school dropout, sleeping in the abandoned buildings, eating out of trash cans, I went from being a high school dropout, getting a GED to having a PhD. Listen to me. The only thing it takes is knowing what it takes. So one day I woke up and was like, okay, E, stop talking about what you don't have. You need to know what you don't know so you can get to where you're trying to get to. Listen to me, guys. I'm real simple. The first thing I'm going to ask you, do you know what it takes? That's it. Now, if you know what it takes, that's great. You mark it off. So so now, you know, we're doing real estate. I'm doing solar. Like, I got a lot of stuff going on. And I remember before being in that room with Warren Buffett, I never even thought about, I never even thought about making that kind of money. I never thought about making money. But I was sitting in the room with Warren Buffett. A friend of mine, Dan Gilbert, he invited me to the meeting. I'll never forget. He called me like, it was during December, like Christmas, just before Christmas. And he called me, he's like, E, what you doing tomorrow? I'm like, oh, what's going on? He's like, I've got Warren Buffett here and probably about 30 other guys. And I'm like, what do you mean what's going on? If you bring in Warren Buffett, there's nothing going on. 
Like, what would I, what, what was I doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, what was I doing that was that important that I'm not going to be in the room with Warren Buffett? So I get in the room with Warren Buffett, and what blows my mind is that he's human. No, for I just unleashed all your dreams and goals. All your dreams and goals. I walk, look, there are those of you who watch people on TV and you go, oh, and you admire them and you love them. And some of you watch so much TV because you really want to live your dreams through somebody else. You're not ready to do the work. For real, so you watch it on TV so you can get inspired. And so I, Warren Buffett, everybody's sitting down, Warren Buffett walks in the room, and when Warren Buffett walks in the room, it blows my mind. I'm like, yo, this dude is human. He's, I'm like, I've been seeing him all, like, you know what I'm saying? Like when you see celebrities, they always photoshopped. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like you see celebrities, it's like Oprah hair always intact on the thing. I ain't never seen Oprah hair out of tack on one of the, like her magazine. And she come on TV, got the everything. Blah, blah, blah. One Buffett walked in, he, he, he wasn't on TV. <laughs> he wasn't photoshopped. He was human. No, I'm saying he was human. You could see like the skin color, you know what I'm saying? The blemish, like you could see it. He came in, he didn't have on a Pat Riley suit. Like he didn't come in with an Italian suit on. He came in with like a normal, I'm like, that's a normal suit. I'm like, that's Sears and Robot. I know Sears and Robot. That's a Sears and Robot suit. You know what's so crazy? He could wear a Sears and Robot suit because he was already one of the richest men in the world. He didn't have to come in and impress nobody. He didn't have to come in and prove that he was rich because we know he rich. I'm like, what, a, what an amazing feeling. Like you can be your authentic self. Like Warren Buffett didn't have to come in because some other guys came in and they was they they had the suits that he didn't have on, and they had the million dollar watches that he didn't have on, and they had the shoes that he wasn't wearing. This is Warren Buffett. Like I saw his shoes, I'm like, yo, you can get those at Macy's. <laughs> I'm looking at my man like them some Macy's shoes, right? <laughs> Those not even like Gator, you know, like you got to get them imported from Italy. I was like, you got see. Matter of fact, I've seen those exact shoes at Macy's. He had a normal tie on. He didn't have it all the way up. He didn't have a Pat Riley, like, cut. The, he didn't, it was just a normal button up. And he, one of them was button, one button. I, and he came in the room and he like, he's not GQ. So he wasn't trying to act like he came in to give financial advice. And I sat there listening to this man talk and I was like, whoa, my mom worked for Ford. She later got married. The person that became my father worked at GM my whole life. I'd never heard that conversation before. I had only heard the working class language. It was a different language. I walked out of that room was like, oh, I know what it takes. And what blew my mind was, this is during the recession. Warren Buffett was in Detroit during the recession. And I was like, what is he doing here in the recession? And I heard him talk about, yo, this is the time when we buy. Yeah. So he was talking about the recession the way I never heard. Term. Before I heard the recession, like the recession is coming. The recession is coming. <laughs> Warren Buffett was in the room like, we about to hit. We're in a recession. I'm like, am I in the same room? What did he just say? We're in a recession. This is what we're going to do. Cash is king. We're going to buy up. And I literally watched Dan Gilbert and Warren Buffett buy up buildings downtown Detroit. Skyscrapers for 500000 You can't get a house in certain parts of California. You can't buy a house in California for 500000 Now, I've not been to Phoenix before, so I don't know the prices of houses. But, like, you can live in a, in a, in like a, in a poverty-stricken area in California, and the house is running 400000 uh, 400000 It's like a two-bedroom. But it's got the sun. I guess you're paying for the sun. <laughs> I'm not really sure. And the fact that there's no humidity is what you're paying for, I guess. I watched them buy skyscrapers 10 years ago 
And I watched him put venture capitalists. I watched him put 10, 20 year old, 30 year old kids with ideas and put them in their incubate. And I watched these kids blow up companies and they paying rent. And plus they giving them 20, 30% of their company. I said, wow. So being successful is not who you are. It's what you know. So I need to get a different relationship to knowledge. So you're in this room and we've been here for a few days. We did not come here to be entertained. You did not come here to get pumped up. And I'm telling you, I'm hype right now. I am hype. I am love. I am loving being alive in 2019. Like this is the best. I saw my mentor. I gave him a tour of a building I just bought. We made it into a church downstairs, upstairs, hit the marble floors. He like, Eric, this is unbelievable. But the thing he said to me that was so deep, he was like, yo, I've been knowing you since you came to Michigan State University. He's like, yo, you, I could see peace all over you. I'm like, I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. So I'm hype, but I did not come here just so you can get pumped up or get hype. You have been given information. You are, you are this close to making every dream you wrote down happen. Why? Because you have been taught by the best of the best. You have been taught by the best of the best. You've been taught by people who've been doing this for years. You've been taught by people who love you and care for you. People who are giving you information that you're not going to get randomly on your own. You are getting 10, 20, 30 years of experience in an hour. And so you are this close to your dreams and goals. So I, I have to ask you the question. You have the information. Now what are you going to do with it? Hey dear, welcome to my channel, Fresh Personal Growth Motivation. Today I speak what will you do with it 2024 reality right so you wrote it down that called me the other day like we had i am like blowing my mind number one calling me and you not getting personal development from me no listen to what i just said this He's my best friend in the whole, listen to me very closely, my wife and my kid like this is the person, like he helped me, why are we on the phone talking to specific people who don't know me and whole white programs and now not killing the game, like why are why phone going to write down you are dreams i want what's keeping you from those conversation he had i had because what's keeping you from that we got we going to have a to deal to finish that for the rest people right so we are on the phone i am like stop talking about your reality I am not material, please trying to bring me back to divorce, are you talking marriage and where about that right now, please so don't multi-millionaire you.